It's happening in every neighborhood. Down every street. Sickness. Addiction. And violence has been turning countless homes into crime scenes. Suffering. Depressed. Alone. Suicidal. Very good evening, may God bless you in the name of Jesus. This is your program, Problems and Solutions of tonight. And I would like to invite you for you to watch Care for the Story of Kimberlyn Garcia. She has a very strong story. And maybe you are there on the other side and you have a similar story of Kimberlyn, or you have a different problem. I'm here to tell you, my dear friend, that regardless of your situation, there is a way out. There is a way out for depression. There is a way out for sickness. There is a way out for family problems. Doesn't matter the situation that you are living. And also, doesn't matter how long you are in this situation. Because maybe you are living a problem for years and years and years. You knock at many doors and the doors simply are closed. And you become so desperate that you don't know what to do. Sometimes you are there watch me and sometimes you think that the only solution of your problem is to die. But I'm here to tell you that there is a solution for you. Yes, you who are there on the other side, there is a solution for you. And I'm not here promoting to you a church or religious. I am promoting to you a faith, a faith that transforms people's life. Okay, watch the testimony of Kimberland and if in the meantime, you'd like to be in contact with us, you have the details below, below of your screen and you can reach us any moment. This is your program, Problems and Solutions. When being a daddy's girl ended with her watching her father walk out the door, never to return back home. My suffering started when I was about five years old and my father, um, had been cheating on my mother, and my mother had been a really good wife, even my father admitted that, but he cheated on her, and she confronted him over it, and he, his response was to abandon our family. So there's my mom, she's a homemaker, she was not working, and she found out that he hadn't paid the bills in two months, so all the bills were two months overdue. She had no job, she had two little girls, and my dad abandoned her, just walked out and never came back. Being a single mom, she was desperate to enter into a new relationship, which turned out for the worse. She married somebody way too fast, I think because she was desperate. She was in a terrible situation, she didn't know who to turn to, and that person ended up being a nightmare for all of us. So my stepfather was just extremely abusive and angry and he would get stressed out and his way of dealing with being stressed out was to explode. He would absolutely explode angry, be super angry. And so it just, it was just more and more and more and more piled on constantly. Taking all this in as a teenager, she became more depressed and took things into her own hands. I started smoking. I started drinking heavily in high school. I mean, heavily. I was really, I mean, I drank at totally out of control drinking. I was full of anger. I was angry at him for being like that. And I was angry at my mom for not protecting us from him, for not doing something about it. So I was angry at both of them. So you know you're full of rage, that's never a good thing. So it finally got so bad that I was talking about killing him when I was in high school. I'd gotten to that point. And all this rage inside me, I 
started using drugs before I left home even, I'd started using drugs. Riding motorcycles and riding up and down the East Coast, guns, it just went from bad to worse. I was in that whole, I honestly was just in that whole gangbanger crowd. I just got in with a bunch of gangbangers. And I knew I was empty. You know, I tried to fill that with lots of different things. I would use drugs because I was stressed. I, I would drink, you know, I'd start drinking and you know, there's a certain edge where you might drink a couple of drinks, but there's this edge and once you cross over it, you're drunk and you're out of control. I didn't know where that edge was. I kept pushing the edge of it all the time. Periodically, I would try going to church and then I'd end up leaving the church. Either I saw the pastor do something wrong or I saw somebody else inside the church who was supposed to be saved do something wrong. And so, you know, I was in and out of churches. I was trying to get better, but it just was not working. I got into a relationship with someone who was married, but they were separated from their wife. Then that person started having problems, really serious, serious, serious problems. And so they ended up in the hospital. His brothers invited me to go to the church, to a Friday service to pray for him, to help him try to get better. And so I went to the church, not for myself. I thought I was fine, but I came to try to help my friend. So I came to the church and I started going regularly to the Friday services. And then he got out of the hospital. He started coming with me. She came to the church with the intention of helping a friend, but little did she know that God would transform her life. And I remember every Friday I would feel cleaner. Every Friday I would feel like my soul was, cl was cleansed, that God was removing all these stains that I'd had. You know, I stopped using drugs. I stopped drinking. I stopped hanging out with bad friends. I stopped all that stuff. I used to have terrible migraine headaches. They disappeared. I used to have asthma. It disappeared. I used to have all kinds of allergies to things, really severe allergies, totally disappeared. So I finally got to the point where I realized I had to make a decision. I had to give this person up. Even though I cared about him, even though I was worried about what would happen to them, I had to do it for my own spiritual sake. I had to do it. I had to trust God, make a decision to do what was right. And I knew because he was married, it was wrong. It was just wrong. I had to change. I had to stop. Once I made that decision, I became a servant of God. He became a servant of God. His wife became a servant of God. His son became a servant of God. And I married a person who is a tremendous servant of God. So all of us became servants of the living, true God because, because I made the right decision that allowed that door to open. If I didn't let go of all these wrong things, I would never have a good relationship with God. And to receive the Holy Spirit, you have to have a pure relationship with God. When Kimberly received the Holy Spirit, it was a day that she would never forget. My husband and I, had we didn't have a normal wedding. When we went to get married, we wanted a service where people could be saved. We didn't just want to get married. So we had the pastor preach a service and have a period to seek the Holy Spirit. And while I was seeking the Holy Spirit, during my wedding ceremony, I received the Holy Spirit. So it was amazing. It was like, I got married to my husband and I got married to Jesus on the exact same evening. It was the best thing ever. So I was so happy. I still remember now. I felt like I felt like I was bathed in spirit. It was the most amazing thing. And it really truly made me happy. Like I still as you can tell, I'm still happy thinking about it right now. Like I know God's with me. He protects me every day. He's with me every day. He loves me every day. And I have that peace inside me no matter what happens. My love life is great. Besides my spiritual life, my spiritual life is wonderful. Also, my financial life is good. I have my own business, which God started. Really, truly, God started my business. And God started my husband's business too. We now both have our own businesses. Sometimes we go through problems and things are really hard and they're really crazy. And we think the world is falling apart. And I thought my world was falling apart and I could have given up. But if you're out there and you're in a situation where your world is falling apart, don't give up because things are hard. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Don't give up because what's at the end is beautiful. 
Tomorrow Friday, my dear friend, here at the Universal Church in Stockholm, in our headquarters, as also in our branch in Gothenburg, we have a strong prayer for deliverance. Like was the first service that actually Kimberland attend was a Friday service. Because Friday is the day that we break all the curses, that we teach people how to overcome all problems. That we teach people how to fight against evil. Because you need to understand one thing. Problem, your problem is not physical. Because, listen careful, if your problem is, will be physical, surely that you have solved that problem already. You agree with me? Yes or no? If your problem was physical, surely you have already solved this problem. But the problem is that your problem is spiritual. And how? The question is, how can you overcome a spiritual problem when you have God by your side? That's why tomorrow, Friday, is the day that we fight. God is spirit. You know, the Bible says that in the beginning of all, the beginning of everything, God said, let it be light. And light came to exist. So God made a separation between the night and the day, between the light and the darkness. So means what? That when you arrive here tomorrow, the darkness that is inside of you, yes, this darkness that is the depression that you are carrying and you don't know how to solve it. Even doctors could not help you, could not help you. They, they tried their best, but they could not help you. You know, this incurable disease, this family problem, sometimes you are facing a family problem with your wife, with your husband, with your children, and you try, you have been trying, and the thing is getting worse and worse and worse. You know, this spiritual problem that is a blockage. You are a person that you give one step forward, and when you think that your life is going well, you give two, three, four backwards. I'm here to tell you that this situation is going to change. This situation is going to change. You're going to write down on a piece of paper um, your problem and you're going to bring it tomorrow. And, and in opportunity, we're going to be making this strong prayer of your deliverance. If you watch me from Stockholm, we have our headquarters here at the Birger Asgotten 106. Birger Asgotten 106, very close to the city center. We're going to be here at 10 o'clock in the morning, at 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and also at 7 p.m. You are our guest to join us. Also, if you will watch me from Gothenburg, or around Gothenburg, we have our prayer there at 10 o'clock in the morning, 4 p.m., and also at 6 p.m. And the address is below of your screen. What you need to do is just to call us and reserve your seat. As you know, we are living moments of restrictions, and for that reason, you need to call us or you need to text us and we're going to reserve for you a place. And tomorrow when you come, surely that you will be free. Because God's power, God that is spirit will take away the spiritual problem that you, that you, go, that you have. This situation. And I, I'm sure that by talking to you right now, I am very sure just by talking to you right now, you feel peace. You feel different. You feel stronger. Do you know why? Because the Spirit of God touched you in this moment. As I'm talking, you receive light there where you are. And this is the proof that God is with you. Let's, let's watch the spot that talks about Friday and we'll be back with you uh, straight after. And if you'd like to talk to someone, if you say like this, I cannot wait for Friday. I need to talk to someone right now. So call us 08612 or you can reach us through the WhatsApp number or through our Facebook page. Call us and we'll be here ready to talk to you. Let's watch this spot that talks about Friday and we'll be back with you straight after. Is it a curse or a coincidence? The same problems happen over and over again. Divorces, health problems that require surgery, financial failure, car accidents, spiritual attacks, it's not a coincidence, but a curse. Every Friday at the Universal Church, strong prayers are held against all curses. Come and break the curse that you and your family has been under. My husband committed suicide when I was quite young. 
left me with three young children. It was about eight years of abuse, starting for psychological abuse until it got physical. I just felt so lost as a teenager, I didn't know who I was. I kind of just felt very, very lonely. My grandmother passed away. Eight months after, nine months after, then my mother passed away too. I kind of buried those emotions. I was having really sleepless nights and I was really desperate. Depression, that was affecting me. Ten years I was on medication. My dear friend, we are closer to the end of this program. Do not waste this opportunity. You are not watching us by coincidence, but you are watching us because God wants to change your life. If you'd like to know more about our ministry, about the universal church that is established for more than 130 countries, you can also visit our website, www.uckg.sc. Or you can watch our story of our church through movie. We have a movie nothing to lose one and nothing to lose two that speaks more about the story of the universal church and you can find it out on the on netflix nothing to lose one and nothing to lose two and you want to know more about us okay it was a pleasure to be with you have a good night may god bless you i'm not leaving this hospital until i know what's wrong with my daughter you want out that's fine with me!